Okay, so you guys are probably wondering why today's fic reading has Sonic and not your typical other pony fic. Well, there's a few reasons for that. And let me start off with the bat. No, I'm not stopping the pony fix. No, I'm not walking away from the fandom. No, I'm not doing some other bullcrap that you might be afraid I'm doing. And no, the story before the previous Luna First chapter hadn't broken me that bad. I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm doing fine emotionally. You don't need to send me gift cards. You don't need to send me get well cards or get well soon cards. I'm fine. I'm okay. So if you care to send me money. But that's beside the point. I realize that today is Sonic's 30th anniversary. And for the next fic, I was thinking of either A, doing... The Sonic Generations Pony Crossover fic that I've been eyeing for a while. Or do Reality Check. Well, I looked at TV tropes on that Sonic Generations fic. And apparently there's a bit where Robotnik gives Celestia a reason you suck speech. And I was thinking about it. And was trying to figure out if I should read it. Which would lead me to just doing a long 30 minute debunking that you guys have probably heard about a billion and one times already. Or do a reading, or if this is better, it works better when it comes from the bad guy side. Then I thought about also doing B. A reality check fic and read some comics. Maybe do some reading of a lot of side comics like the Endgame arc, several Indian Flint's run, stuff like that. But then I was thinking, I really don't feel like suffering reality check um, this month. I want to do something more fun. And it had been a while since I did Fandom Fridays, and that's mainly due to <coughs> extraneous circumstances, due to. My life getting in the way. So I figured... No. I'm tired... Of every Sonic crossover I've been sitting through... Being either... Totally lame... Like that Sonic and Equestria Girls one... I did a few years back... Or B... Incomplete... And probably the only reason why I liked it was because it had Amy bashing. Which isn't really a good reason to like something to tell you I was truth... So I say, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to read something good. Because that's what this channel has always and will forever be about. Showing off the good fanfics that don't get read as much. To demonstrate the good stories. Not the lame ones that feature Robotnik giving a Celestia a reason you suck speech out of nowhere. Because, I don't know, he felt like it. Or some other horse hockey that nobody really cares about. And I don't feel like reading reality checks this political manifesto on why women suck or some other bullshit like that. I want to read something good. I want to read stuff that entertains both me and you guys. And since nobody has a full-on reading of Francis and Robert's stuff, I present to you... Francis and Robert's Sonic Stories. Well, series. Especially since uh, Satam has a season 3 uh, thing going on. And the Sonic movie was awesome. And there's been some long, great Sonic merch. I decided to present this to you guys. And it's going to be a lot more fun than just sitting around listening to me this. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to read... The first half of Francis and Robert's stuff, all the way up to the fir first part of Race for the Emerald Saga, where Knuckles shows up. Then I'll do a Luniverse story. And then I did that. Most likely, either do Seven Days of Sunny June, then another Emerald Saga. And then, if you people are really nice, we might wrap this up with. You know who. So sit back and relax as we take a break from doing the pony stuff and enjoy some Sonic stuff.
Episode 1 of Francis and Robert's pu- pu- Sonic Stories. True Love Recaptured. Yes, I know this has already been a f- subject of Fandom Fridays, but let's not forget. We have Blue over here, and they just love doing new stuff. It's true, I do. Sonic stood by himself, cooking up a large pot of chili. The Freedom Fires had scored the biggest victory over a Butnik ever sent ever with the destruction of his Doomsday device, and planned a celebration the likes of which Mobius had never before seen. He was in charge of bringing the chili dogs, as usual, and was going to make sure they were the best he ever made. He stirred the pot slowly, letting the meat and beans simmer in his own personal secret sauce. This was just about the only thing he knew how to make, thanks to Uncle Chuck, but he knew how to make it well. He lifted the wooden ladle to his lips and let loose a drop of sauce fall to his tongue. Flame exploded from his mouth. He ran out of sight at supersonic speed and headed straight for the power ring pool. Tails was sitting by the pool, dangling his feet idly in the wire when a successive sonic booms alerted him to his best friend's arrival. He stood up to greet Sonic, but flew quickly out of the way when he saw his friend's mouth on fire. Sonic dived to the pool the second he reached it. Steam rose to pull. Sonic surfaced a second layer, sputtering and coughing. <coughs> Needs more cayenne pepper, <coughs> he thought smugly. Hey, Sonic! Tails yelled, flying over until he was above Sonic. Mm-hmm. Thanks a little, bro, Sonic replied, reaching up and grabbing Tails' hands. Man, my chili is starting to make this celebration a blast. Ah, oh, Sonic, Tails said as he carried his French sword. You know your chili sauce is too weak for my teeth. <laughs> yeah, right, Tails. Anything you say. He let go and jumped ashore, dripping wet. Time for a serious shake. He shook himself violently to water flying off of him. Hey, watch it! Someone yelled to his right. So I turned and saw Princess Sally standing there. She's wearing a blue, off the shoulder dress with matching skirt that was now plastered to her body. Her hair clung to her face, dripping wet. Makeup streaked her face in wet lines, making her look older than she was. I spent all morning getting ready for this party, she said, rounding on Sonic, and you ruined it in a matter of seconds. Chill, Sal, Sonic replied nonchalantly, trying to keep his eyes from bugging out. It ain't no biggie. This, coming from a hedgehog who cares so much about his quills, she muttered under her breath. Aloud, she said, I'm going to dry off and change. If you think you can handle it, go get the party started and install for me. No prop, Sal. Grab on, little bud! Tails grabbed onto Sonic's waist, just as he took off of a Sonic boom. Sally stood there, shaking her head. Sometimes I wonder why I ever fell in love with you, Sonic Hedgehog, she thought. She floated off to her house, wondering just how long this ability she got from the deep power stones would last. Later on at the party, Sonic had just finished piling a plate with a pyramid of chili dogs when Sally reappeared. She was dressed as he normally saw her, blue vest and boots. Yo, Sally girl! He called as he walked up. Want a chili dog? I don't think so. She said in a superior tone. Never understood what you see in those things. So I tossed up a chili dog and caught it in his mouth, swallowing it whole. Aw, oh, come on, Sal! Think of it as a peace offering! Does he always tell me, you never know until you try? He said in his best imitation of her voice. Sally threw up her hands. Ugh, fine! She grabbed the chili dog from the plate and ate it quickly, before she had a chance to taste it. Happy now? Sonic stood there, arms folded, foot tapping. He knew what was going to happen. He watched the delight as Sally's eyes widened slightly, her tongue licking the corner of her mouth where a piece of chili remained. She reached for another one, but Sonic saw her, Sonic's eyes on her and quickly drew her hand away. Not bad, she said in a quivering voice. Sonic picked up another chili dog and held it under Sally's nose. Sir, sure, you don't want another one? Leaning in slightly. Sally trembled for a few seconds, then looked at Sonic, an evil smile on her face. No, you can have it. She said, hands sneaking off to the edge of the plate. I'll just take these. She lifted the plate off and ran off, using her other gift for the deep power stones. Hey, get back here with those! He gobbled the chili dog he held and leaped over the table. It's time! Warp it! He took off at full speed, just beginning to close the distance between him and Sally as he entered the great forest. Privately, Sonic was a little jealous. 
All the deep power stones had done to him were increase his speed to the point he no longer really needed a power ring. Sally, on the other hand, now held his speed and could fly too. He wondered how long it would be before the effect wore off. Antoine watched as these events unfolded, a smirk on his face. It is disgraceful how that pink cushion only sticks us out of my fair princess, he said to no one in particular. Has he no shame? I would never be caught dead ceasing after a woman like that. He sighed. However, if my princess would be chasing after like me after that, but it is a hopeless proposition. But I shall never give up. He stood up, facing the rice and Sally and Fanston, and yelled, Do you hear me? I shall never give up! Calm down, Sorga. A voice said behind him, I was like everybody in a great forest of hurt you. And presenting, ladies and gentlemen, my martial art user thinks that Ashley Balls is voice bunny in Sonic Prime. He literally did not change his voice for either one. She's right, you know. Antoine screamed and jumped. He turned around, heart in his throat. I saw Bunny there standing, smiling. Ah, Mademoiselle Bunny, he said shakily, mopping his sweaty brow. It is not a good idea to sneak up on the captain of the Urolo Gods like that. Bunny permitted herself a chuckle. Antoine was always so funny, especially when he was spooked. Just wondering what you were up to, she said innocently. I would like to think Antoine does says he's captain of the Royal Guard, basing himself off of his dad. It's, they did that when they were kids. Antoine sighed again. I was just watching the love of my life being pursued by the few in this hedgehog. Just briefly, Antoine thought he saw Bunny Flint's. He was going to ask why, but I was interrupted by Roger. Hey, Bunny. He called, walking up to them. Want to dance? Bunny, so warn you, you're probably a beard to Rotor. I'm going to make some but Rotor is gay jokes for throughout the rest of this episode, throughout the series. Just letting you know. Sure thing, Rope. See you later, Ant. Antoine wants to stay headed onto the dance floor to the beat of a band that just started playing. A twins of pain tugged at his heart. He remembered a time, many years back, when he'd been interested in someone besides Sally. Someone who returned his affections. If only. Angrily, he banished the thought. No, he could never risk harming her again. If he failed, he had failed her once. And he would do whatever it took not to hurt her again. Even if it meant giving up his only chance at happiness. Bunny wants Antoine walk off of his head and bowed out the corner of her eye and sighed. Dancing with Rudder was okay. He moved well and knew what he was doing, even though she was glad he had metal, she had metal feet. But he was not who she wanted to dance with. She liked Rotor as a friend, but the relationship was purely professional, despite what others thought. She could not see letting herself get involved with someone who depended solely to keep herself going. And besides, I'm way too much of a Bunny Ant fan to allow this to happen. No, her heart was on another. One had been set on since childhood. If everyone ever found out she had still carried a torch for him, and a bright one at that, he or she would probably collapse in a fit of laughter. But Bunny didn't care. The fact was, this animal used to be interested in her. But then... Bunny shook her head and concentrated on dancing with Rotor. He made it quite clear there was no chance of an intimate relationship, even though he had never said why. Thinking about was like opening a scar. No matter how old the wound, it hurt and bled, just like it did the first time. Antoine walked through the almost deserted streets of Knothole, head bowed in thought. The past was past. He told himself over and over. It should be left there. But no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't help but thinking about what might have been. Something's troubling you, Antoine, a soft voice spoke. He looked for the source of the voice and saw Rosie walking beside him. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you one of the best grandmas in the whole series. No, no, Rosie, he said quickly. Yes, the bird. Rosie smiled that knowing smile. Well, maybe you could help me then. I need someone to carry a few things to the party for my hut. But of course, madam. 
who just let to show me what it is and to be needing to be moved. They went to silence their hut. Once there, she told them to gather a few things in the closet while she got things from the kitchen. Some of the stuff was heavy, and Antoine strained to get them out of the closet. He found himself thinking that Bunny would be better for this. Again, there was a tug at his heart. He looked down for a second, then turned around. Rosie was staring at him, and Antoine had the uncanny feeling that she had followed every twist and turn his mind had taken. You still love her, don't you? She said. Antoine tried to look away, but found himself held fast by Rosie's gaze. Don't be ridiculous, he said, stuttering. I love only my princess. Rosie let out a breath and half sigh, half laugh. <laughs> that sounds good, Antoine. Keep telling yourself that. You might start believing in it in another year or so. Antoine rests his gaze away. Well, anyway, I just wanted to show you what I found hidden away. So he held out a worn, beat-up old bucket. Recognize it? Antoine took the bucket from her and caught his breath in surprise. It could not be, he whispered in awe. But it is. This is your old water balloon bucket. You had some great fun with this, didn't you? You did, I did. He caressed the broken oaken handle lovingly, but he, this is not in my past, he said, holding it out to her. Rosie pushed it back toward him. Come on, Antoine, this is a party. Why don't you like it up a little? I know one particular doll who went in mind. I'll even help you set her up, just like the old days. A hint of mischievous appeared in his eyes. I would be needing no more than 15 minutes, he said, running out the door. Au revoir! Rory stood at the doorway and watched him go. She smiled with satisfaction and walked back to the party. The things in her kitchen and closet had forgotten. Meanwhile, at another part of Mobius, near the wreckage of the Doomsday Device, Sniffling was directing the SWAT bots and salvaging what they could. I'm so glad that I put in that program giving me control of Robotropolis. He thought, that will make my takeover of Mobius so much easier now that the big round boy has been destroyed. A series of psych booms approaching caused attention. Sir, the nearest SWAT bot reported, a creature is moving toward our position at a high rate of speed. Is it organic? Sniffly asked in his nasal tone. The red visor and the robot's head flickered in surprise. No, sir, it is not. Then disregard and continue work, he ordered. Swapot saloon marched away. Looks like my friend is returning from his run, he thought. By combining the speed program I used in that robotic cheetah and data required from spy bots, I recredited a huge plume of dust streaked in from the horizon, stopping it directly from Snively. As the dust cleared, he exclaimed, Metal Sonic! The front of Sniffly looked like a perfectly rendition of what Sonic would look like before a bot size. Hello, friend, Sniffly continued. Are you ready to create some havoc? Middle Sonic's lips parted in a cruel smile, showing two rows of pale teeth. He was ready. Good, now go. You remember the plan. Middle Sonic bowed, turned around, sped off. Stage one is underway. Sniffly thought and then laughed. <laughs> Back at Knothole, Bunny made her way to a seat. Once she had gotten out on that dance floor, the men had kept her there. Well, you can see why! She had a lot of fun and enjoyed all the attention, but she wasn't used to it. She fanned herself with her good hand, trying to cool off. Rosie walked up and sat down next to her. Getting a lot of attention from the men, uh, Bunny? She asked. Well, I'll know it. This part's great, I'll tell you. Rosie nodded. Skinning the crowd. Everyone seems to be having a good time today. Did you dance with every man in the hole? Oh, yep, yeah, that's about it. Everyone will save Sonic. Was off somewhere with Sally, I am. Her voice trailed off as became pensive. So you also danced with. Let's see. Knack. Vector. Mighty. Ray. And Jeffrey. He bribed her.
Her voice trailed off and became pensive. The one who you most like to be there, right? Bunny shook her head and resumed fanning herself. You could always read my mind, Rosie. Don't worry, gal. As he said, putting, patting Bunny's knee. I'm sure things will turn out like they should. She got up and stretched. I'm going to get to something to eat. Want anything? No, thanks. See you around. Rosie walked away and Bunny sat there, along with her thoughts. Need some help cooling off, Bunny? See her from above. I think I may be able to help you with that. Bunny looked up just in time to see a yellow balloon plummeting toward her. Swoosh! The balloon exploded, drenched her in ice water. Bunny started shivering immediately. From high above, she heard someone laughing hard and knew immediately who had done that. I'm gonna get you, Antoine! She yelled, seeking her metallic fist in mock fury. Antoine sat on a branch directly above Bunny with a bucket next to him. He was grabbing the tree in one hand and tossing another balloon up and down in the other hand. And what do you t do, do about this? He taunted. Bunny stood and extended her metallic legs until she was at equal height with Antoine. Hi about this. I was expecting it. He said. He dressed around our balloon. Oh, wet bunny. He slid down the trunk of the tree and ran off into the forest, carrying the bucket laughing the whole way. Bunny wiped the water from her face and lowered herself back to normal. She ran after Antoine, laughing herself. Antoine hadn't been this much of a prankster since that incident in Robotropolis when they were eight. You see that with Robotnik gone, everyone was returning who they used to be. Maybe some of those little feelings will return, too, she thought wistfully. They played for what seemed like hours. Bunny chasing Antoine, Antoine pelting Bunny with a balloon when he got too close. She knew she would have to dry off later or restoring out. But she didn't care. She was young again. Whole again. Having fun again. Nothing else mattered. Oh, yeah. Kind of like how um, in the pre-reboot, Artsy, Bunny got her uh, organic guns back. And then Antoine got into a coma. And then Bunny had to read Cybernetic herself. Well, at the very least, at least her parents didn't die before the coup happened. Oh, wait. My God, I swear. Why is it? What is it with me in reading these southern gals who've had tragic backstories with their families? Applejack and Bunny? God, these two girls should get along. Antoine had temporarily given her as a slip, and she was searching every very carefully for help. Bunny, help! That call brought her to the present. Sounded like Sonic was in trouble. Sonic? She called, trying to orient his voice. I'm stuck in some kind of leftover mega muck. Please, hurry! I have a cup of sugar, Hulk! She ran towards his voice as fast as she could. She was sorry that the game had broken up, but business was business, and her friend needed help. Where are you? <sighs> Over here! The voice was closer this time, somewhere off to her right. The closer she got, the more she thought something didn't sound quite right. His voice sounded odd, almost tinny, as if something was being spread from a mess of wire. Wire! She called again. Right here! A metallic voice said next to her ear. In the flask, a metal arm circled her throat, chucking off her breath and stopping her dead in her tracks. What the hell, honey? She grabbed the arm with her body can and tried to pull it off. Uh, 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 the voice said. That would work with most robots, dude, but not me. Who are you? You can call me Metal Sonic. Sniffly made me to help track and capture you Freedom Fires. And guess who's first on his list? I call my might! She hauled with all her might but couldn't buzz the robot. Enough of that. He said, pinching a nerve in Bunny's neck. She stiffened in sudden pain and collapsed, unconscious. He was about to pick her up and carry her off when a loud KIA caused him to look up. Antoine flew at him, foot aiming for the metal robot's head. He struck and glanced off the hard metal, yelping on pain. The robot backslapped Antoine, knocking him senseless. <clears throat> well, well, Mel Sonic said. Looks like a two for one. He used his free hand to grab at Antoine, 
hoisted one on each shoulder and sped off at supersonic speed for Robotropolis. Once there, he dumped her in a holding cell, slammed her and shut the door. It always caused Antoine to wake with a start. He looked around dazedly, felt his jaw to see if it was broken. It wasn't. Buttering a few curses in French, he stood up and stumbled to the bars of the cell. Who is to be being behind this? Rotterdam! He yelled, unable to focus. Come on, Ant, a little voice said near his ear. Don't tell me you don't recognize my voice. Antoine's eyes snapped wide open. There, outside the cell, he saw Metal Sonic, leaning against the wall. Sacre bleu! It could not be! But it is. Now, you better go be with your girlfriend, because you don't have much time left. Choose it loose time. Metal Sonic sped off, leaving only dust behind. Antoine read the bunny and cradled her head in his lap. Oh, bunny, he said softly. Again, my playing says close to your pain. I'm so sorry. Tears fell from his eyes, wetting her face and ears. Excellent work, Mel Sonic, Snively said to the robot who disappeared at his control room. You have broken their will. They think their leader is one of us now. <laughs> Fine and dandy. But what will we do about the real Sonic? That stays too, my friend. I'll take care of him personally. Both smiled crudely, watching the monitor as Antoine tried failing to wake Bunny. So he's not dead, is he? Nah, just come a toast for an hour or so. Good, now get my hover ship. As you command, sir! Mel Sonic spin off a sniffly walking calmly behind him. Over the great forest, Sonic and Sally walked back toward Naho, arm in arm, wearing silly looks on their faces. Chili Sonic smelled a spirit all over their faces, but they seemed happy. I think that was our longest and best makeout session ever. Sure, I'll only make out. Actually, my art for easier, according to this book, it really was just a makeout session. Well, really? Huh. Learn something new every day. Sonic remarked. Sally nodded. I think so, too. It probably would have lasted longer if Lee didn't have to get back to the party. So he stuck onto his arm. I don't know what it is about you, Sonic. Sometimes I wonder why I ever fell in love with you. Other times I wonder how I didn't love you. Likewise, Sal. He said because of your forehead. Sally stopped abruptly. Can't you say it? Say what? That you love me. You know I do. Why do I gotta say it? Sally pulled away from him, hands on her hips. Because I want to hear it. Oh, Sal. Why you gotta be like that? Sally walked to her, arm encircling her waist. Sally pushed him away. You know, Sonic, it's times like this when I think that maybe you can't say it because you don't feel it. Sonic then held onto his chest and staggered backward. Just rip my heart out and stop my way, don't you? Sally turned from him in frustration. Find me like that. But know this, Sonic Hedgehog. You're not getting any more kisses from me until you say those three little words. Darn it! If there's one thing your partner hold, if there are two things your partner can hold hold against you, it's bet it's bedtime and kiss time. Darn it! So he started walking away from him in righteous anger, but he grabbed her from behind, turned her around, and tilted her backward. Princess Sally, Alicia Acorn, he said, looking deep into her eyes. From the moment I met you all those years ago in Mobotropolis, your grace, beauty, and Chelsea's wit. Purity and goodness have attracted me to you. I have loved you with all my heart, mind, and body and soul for so long. It's as if you're a part of me. Or not to me, I will love you forever. Even beyond the day of my death. Will you do the same? You know, this is the only problem I ever have with Francis and Robert's stuff when it comes to Sonic. Sometimes they can get good with Sonic's character. Other times they make him start speaking very dramatic that... I'm wondering if he did read a note card from Antoine. Tell us see. Love, beauty, intelligence, beyond my death, check. Personally, I think a more in character sign would be <laughs> Sal Sally. I love you even more than a chili dog. 
you are the fastest way to my little bitty heart, baby. Then kiss her. Or Sal, I love you. As much as I hate to say it, you're probably the only reason why I'm, I'm still here. You are the hottest, greatest thing in my life. And personally, I love you more than chili dogs. You know, does, does something like that. Something that shows signs of personality. Ben Schwarzenegg might come close to this, but um, he might be quoting every cheesy romance movie he ever saw. Speaking of which, um, fans of the movie, am I the only one who, if uh, they introduce Amy or Sally, I'm going to go for both because I'm going to be nice to both fan bases. We can have Sonic being nervous around them and ask uh, Tom for uh, dating advice. Sally stared for a moment, then melted into Sonic's embrace. She mumbled something unintelligible, but Sonic understood. He had just swept her off her feet completely, and she had not been even at least prepared. I never thought I'd thank Ant for anything! He thought as he moved in for a kiss. Okay, seen approved! But he was right. Sometimes women do like being put up on a pedestal, and Sally deserves it most of all. I just hope she doesn't expect this to be an everyday thing. I hate to break up this touching scene, a nasal voice said, snapping both Sonic and Sally back to reality. But I'm afraid you must come with me. He sniffly appeared from nowhere and grabbed Sonic's arm. Yes, he exclaimed. Now, you miserable hedgehog, I will do what my uncle could not. Capture and roboticize you! Sonic smiled at Sally, who smiled back. Well, Sniffly, he began in a mock scare tone. If you want me, you better hold on tight! Nothing could make me let go of you, Hedgehog, until you're in a cell next to that French guard in the rabbit. You captured Antoine and Bunny? Sally asked incredulously. That's it! Sonic said, sounding really upset. Meet you up there, Sally! Got it, Sonic! She said, standing up and disentangling herself from him. And just what do you think you're doing, Hedgehog? Snively asked. Not where I'm going, Snively. Sonic ran up to the top of the tree. Where we are! He held Snively by his long nose over the branches. Now, Snively, where are they? You know... This just makes me think of that one comic panel where uh, Sonic told the Babylon rogues that if his friends weren't okay, they better hope they were faster than him. Snively gulped, In my base at Robotropolis! Your base? Sally asked, flying beside Sonic. You mean... Yes, I'm in control now. There's no sign of Robotnik. And personally, I couldn't care less if he ever returned. Hang out for a while, Sniffly, my man, Sonic said, hanging the back of his jacket out the top of the tree. Sal, you get her the others. I'll get them back. By the way, nice red Sniff. Use time! Sonic, be careful. She so called after him as he sped away. So he floated off towards the hole as fast as he could. Sniffly struggled to get down, but he was stuck fast. He pulled the communicator from his pocket. Mel, Sonic, come in! Roboticize those two freedom fires now and send someone to get me down! The last burst of him from it was a cry. The sound of metal scraping upon metal woken Antoine from his trance. He had sat, watching the rise and fall of Bunny's chest as he breathed and felt the reassuring throbbing of her pulse for so long, his mind had spaced out momentarily. Yeah, I'd be watching Bunny's chest rise and fall too. Up and down, up and down, up been down. Oh, that is it. Let's get the time. <laughs> he eased out from under Bunny and hid in the dark corner of the room. Roboticization time! Metal Sonic called cheerfully, unlocking the cell. Seeing only Bunny, he said, Hey, where's the other one? He turned around slowly, surveying the cell with infrared vision. When his back was to Antoine, he jumped out, landing a side right kick to the back of the robot's head. 
As the robot turned around, Antoine hooked an arm under the robots and threw him over his hip. It was a maneuver Bunny had used on him many times in martial arts class. Metal Sonic landed hard on his back. Primary motor imbalance functions impaired. Institutory secondary systems. Estimated time of action, 15 seconds. <laughs> Antoine picked Bunny up on his shoulder and ran outside the cell. He slammed the cell door and the lock clicked. Without waiting to see the robot were revive, he blindly fear taking over as he ran. A slight groan escaped Bunny. Concerned for her, sliced through Antoine's feet like a knife. He stopped to survey his surroundings. Recognizing the area, he ran toward an old escape tunnel to freedom fighters used to sneak in and out of the city. Bunny shook her head, regaining consciousness. Huh? What, what happened? Antoine? Bunny! Antoine stopped and laid her down. Are you okay? Ugh, I feel like someone using my hand for an anvil, that's all. Where are we? The little up this. The worst has happened. The few hedgehog has been captured and robotized. We are all timid! Bunny sat up. Now, I remember. He called himself Mail Sonic and said Snively made him. We need to get to the, the others fast! Antoine went down. I'm sorry, Bunny. My furiousness has almost cost you again. Forgive me. Bunny went down, tears in her eyes. Oh, Antoine. Is that what you thought all these years? I don't blame you for what happened. If it wasn't for you, I would have been robotized completely. Let's just forget about the past, sugar. Concentrate on our future. Antoine thought about that. He says, Z, he said, standing. I didn't think of Petit. But now, as you said, we need to escape. He stood and walked towards the escape tunnel. But he saw he was vulnerable. He just stayed there again. It was fine to keep his emotions in check. As she wanted him back, she knew he would never have a better opportunity. Nuts to that! She yelled. She extended her legs, locked him around Antoine's legs, and pulled him in before he could react. Antoine turned to her as she pulled him in. Look at you! He began. When he was within her reach, Bunny grabbed him and passed an embrace and kissed him with all the feeling and emotion that he had kept pent up for the past eight years. Antoine resisted at first, but feeling his own emotions burst out from where he had kept them locked away. He embraced her and kissed her with equal passion. And he stood there, kissing like that, until Antoine pulled back slightly. Bunny, I... Bunny laid a finger over his lips. For the past eight years, I've been wanting to do that. I love you, Antoine. I never stopped loving you. Now, I know where you stopped loving me. You blame yourself for what happened, right, sugar? So he asked, indicating her arms and legs. You're the one who pulled me out of the cursed machine before I finished. Antoine looked away, tears in his eyes. But if you wasn't to love me, he said, accent getting really bad. You would not have been captured in the first place. Antoine, what are you saying? Come now, explain yourself. Antoine took a deep breath and got out slowly. I was in the great world that day. I knew you were waiting to exact revenge on me for planking you, and I purposely avoided you. I should have said something when they showed up, but I was, how do you say, too ticket. Bonnie grabbed his chin and gently turned his face to face hers. But you followed me and rescued me. We are only nine years old, then. Anyone would have done the same. But you were brave enough to come along to my aid. Besides, things turn out for the best. Without these robotic parts, we will stand much less of a chance against Robot Lake. You carried this burn for far too long, sugar. Like I. Antoine sighed. He struck the back of one bunny's ear, smiling. You were done putting this year the night before. He said. Dropping his accent in this moment of tenderness. I'm not. I'm not dropping the accent. I never stopped loving you. Just kept it heated today. That's why I went to Tanzania. To try and forget you. You see, had accepted me, I might have. But they didn't. So I never could. No more, Antoine? Bunny asked, a tear creeping from her eye. And no more. He agreed, kissing away the tear. My love. He drew her head close to his and they kissed again, not holding back any longer. The sound of approaching feet drew their attention. They looked and saw Sonic running toward them. Get a move on, guys! 
He said, not noticing the persisting of caught the man. Slot butts are around the corner! Antoine Bunny disengaged a bit reluctantly, though, and stood up. Zonik! Antoine said, back, back as Anne said, You still know the ski tunnel nearby. Slot looked at Antoine, surprised. Good thinking, Ant. I've forgotten about that. Itzy, grab an arm and hold on! He did. Sonic took off at top speed. He raced the tunnel and plowed through the door. He ran the length of it and didn't stop until he was safely back at Knothole. Later that night, after the party was over, Buddy and Antoine related their encounters with Metal Sonic. This is bad, Sally said. Looks like we underestimated Stively. We could be in more trouble than his uncle was. Yeah, Sonic said, bummed. <sighs> when will it end? I don't know, Sonny boy. Uncle Tex was funny at the table, but I know we'll keep fighting until he does. Maybe Rhoda and I can come up with something. Yeah, Rhoda piped up. It shouldn't be too long. Everything robotic has to have some kind of weakness. We just need to find it. Keep us informed, you two, Sally said. And I want the specs on that new d you've been working on. Anything else? I have something, Antoine said standing. I believe a certain female and I have some very intimate and... Personal things to discuss about the relationship, none? Antoine, Sally began, for the thousandth time. No, 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 no. Not you, my princess. He walked behind Bunny's chair and lifted her outer chair into his arms. The time has come, my little doll, he said, nuzzling her neck. Looks like you've been replaced, Sally girl, Bunny said, rubbing her arms around Antoine's neck and cuddling her head into his chest. He walked off. Carrying her without tripping or stumbling once. Somehow. Although once they were out of sight, uh, Bunny became too heavy for Antoine's weak little bitty yard, so Bunny carried him the rest of the way. Everyone left exchanges of disbelief. That they all fainted for the shock, legs pointing straight up in the air. All that is, except Rosie and Tails. Yuck! Tails exclaimed, taking off and flying off. <laughs> and since Sonic and Aunt Sally weren't bad enough, Rosie just sat there, watching them leave. It's about time, she thought to herself happily. I knew it would happen eventually. I just did what I could to help a little. She stood and watched her hut, humming contently to herself. Well, folks, we're in for a wild ride. Hope you enjoyed the rest of the series. And who knows? Maybe, just maybe, we can finally get a toast page for the, these fix. See you later.